Christians' institutions in this country has a rich history in engaging the government or the state and the society on matters, governance, leadership, and policy, including moral problems that the society is facing. But the overriding question is, how effective is the role of faith in governance in our society today? Joining me in studio is an economist, a governance and policy expert, Vincent Kimosop. Thank you. How are Welcome. You? Asante sana. Together with us is a professor of law. He has served in parliament between 2002 to 2007. He has served in cabinet as a minister. He has also served as an advisor to the president. He has served as a county governor of Makweni County. Professor Kivutha Kibwana. Asante sana. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It uh, looks like your public life uh, or public service uh, life began at a very tender age. Mm -hmm. uh, and just going through your profile, at the age of 23, you were already uh, a lecturer at the U University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Maybe start, what really launched you to public service? Well, um, yes, at 23, I was teaching in a public university, that is the University of Nairobi, and I, I had always wanted to be a teacher, uh, because in primary school, in secondary school, uh, I really uh, loved interacting with my teachers, and I, you know, uh, I thought that when I grew up, I would also be a teacher, but uh, one of my uh, secondary school teachers and my father as well thought I should be a lawyer, you know, because maybe I could get the grades and uh, I could make a lot of money. Uh, and I, I deferred to their advice about doing law, but I didn't uh, defer to their advice about making a lot of money. Yeah. So instead of going into practice, mm -hmm. I ended up being a, a, a teacher. Uh, because I thought also, later as I grew in that profession, you interact with young people and you can make a difference uh, in terms of their growing uh, and therefore in terms of the future of our country. A rich history there uh, in terms of just the love that you've had for public service mm -hmm. because I doubt if you've done a private practice of law. Not really okay. much, except uh, I used to do some pro bono, and even now, some mm -hmm. pro bono work mm -hmm. that is representing uh, people who are in difficult situations mm -hmm. uh, without asking uh, for money. Mm -hmm. uh, even recently in the Gen Z situation, uh, I did go to court on behalf of uh, Bonfas, Mwangi and others, uh, but I have not done private practice uh, for money. All right. Uh, Mr. Kimosop, yes, of course, Prof has mentioned the Gen Zs, mm. and this is a conversation that we've had post uh, 25th of June yeah. when the young people got into parliament. Mm. Uh, if you look at that movement mm. of young people yeah. and where we are at as a nation yes. today, yeah. is that the changes that we've seen in the cabinet, um, the protracted uh, electioneering period, if mm. you may mm. say so, mm. uh, because we went to elections in 2022, mm -hmm. uh, August, mm. and it looks like we only completed it the other day with a new deputy in office. Okay. Is this what the young people were agitating for? I, I see the Gen Z think more from a long-term view. I, I, don't, I see the, the, them go hitting the streets as a manifestation mm -hmm. of a deeper problem that we haven't confronted as a country. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that is uh, really the issue of investment in deliberate healing mm -hmm. and, 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 and journey of building a nation and building a state. There is more, a lot of work around building the state, but more also needs to be done on building the nation. So the, 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 um, uh, if you look at what the Gen Z were doing, and you read the, the report of the, uh, the um, uh, APRM process, mm -hmm. that is the Africa Peer Review Mechanism, um, together with the report of the 2008 post, the, 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 the committee that was put together mm -hmm. to mediate the 2007, mm -hmm. uh, commonly known as the Agenda 4. Mm -hmm. The four agendas, the first agenda was then providing humanitarian support for the people who were suffering Perfect. as a result of the post-election violence. Number two was then uh, uh, dealing with the uh, human rights abuses and 
ensuring that uh, people are given dignity. And then the agenda three mm -hmm. was the issue of the political question, mm -hmm. where you had two sides that were differing. Mm -hmm. But agenda four really were the thing that drove, drove us to where we were. One of them, the issue of uh, that uh, mobilization of politics on an ethnic identity, the issue of long-term grievances, land reforms and all that. But the painful part was then the, the issue of young people. Mm -hmm. uh, young people are unemployed. Young people, you have highly educated people who don't have jobs. And then, then therefore, the finance bill, so discussing only the Gen Z from the, there was a finance bill, you mm. miss out on really what are the real underlying issues. issues. Now, w when you put that into context, uh, that helps you to then ask yourself, mm. so if you'd remove the finance bill, which the president says, okay, I concede, I remove the finance, mm. but you would see, still see the young people on the streets. Mm. So uh, unless we deliberately invest in opening up other economic engines, mm. Uh, this issue of unemployment may persist. I, I am happy with the investment on digitalization, but there is also a limit in which how many uh, people, uh, people can, can absorb. be absorbed on digitalization. So, Prof, we will miss it if we find ourselves having the discussion who won, who was, you, 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 you are not helping. Prof, you have been part of our constitutional journey mm. um, until this point. And of course, like uh, Kimosop is mentioning, the four critical agendas that were reviewed then, one of it was human rights. Uh, and our constitution is very strong on human right. Bill of rights. Yeah. Bill of rights. Mm. It seems like we have not given that as a nation uh, the focus that it requires based on our constitution because abductions are still happening, we are seeing extrajudicial killings. Is it that our constitution, in terms of its implementation, there are some areas that still need to be worked on? Mm. Uh, it is true that uh, the independence constitution, 1963 constitution, by 1990, 1990, it had been amended, you know, so many times that we more or less didn't have a constitution. Mm -hmm. And of course, even the will to implement uh, the remnant constitution, uh, so to speak. So it took quite a lot of effort to say, you know, we want a return to multipartism, we want a new constitution, not to just amend the 63 constitution. And that was a big fight to move away from, uh, let us have a new constitution, not simply amending uh, the old constitution through uh, uh, parliament. But there were people who still didn't believe that we should have a new constitution. But after 2007-8, uh, during those uh, 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 clashes, yeah. uh, almost near civil war, uh, it was decided that at least there should be, you know, a constitution should be considered uh, so that there is some kind of closure to that struggle. Uh, but it didn't mean that those who made that concession were ready to have it implemented. Mm -hmm. And that is why, you know, up to today, uh, yes, we have a constitution that uh, we say is uh, one of the best maybe on the continent, mm -hmm. maybe even elsewhere, but we are very short on implementation. And I think therefore, even the question of you know, human rights, the question of uh, even how devolution is unfolding, mm -hmm. Uh, the question of uh, police reforms, because police reforms mm -hmm. were also a very critical mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of uh, uh, the, the Anan mm -hmm. uh, negotiations. Yes, uh, so uh, I, I, I think as a country, we, we, we have to really say we want to go forward in terms of implementing the constitution. You know, all those, the human rights, mm -hmm. the values, devolution, how you know integrity how you manage public finances how the security because the, the, the constitution is very comprehensive in terms of saying if you want what you know vincent is saying about uh, getting a nation 
you know, getting the people together, g moving away from negative, mm. you know, ethnicity, yeah. but still celebrating in the positive mm. uh, aspects of our cultures. Mm. Uh, I think that's where we are stuck. Okay. Uh, in terms of, yes, you have a beautiful constitution, constitution yeah. Yeah. but you don't want to implement it. Yeah. And I think when we get away from, you know, that jinx mm -hmm. and, and, and begin to do what the young people are saying, mm -hmm. that why don't you just do things right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just, you know, uh, 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 stop Correct. taking and taking and taking mm -hmm. uh, from uh, the people? Mm -hmm. Uh, when, when, when we do that, we will be set to go places okay. and, and, and it beholds all of us, mm -hmm. especially the leadership and even the citizenry mm -hmm. to really push and say that, you know, Kenya must be different. We must change. And the, that's the, the prayer the, for... The, yeah. uh, you okay. want to... Okay. I, I just wanted to, to is, hate is, it when it's still it, hot. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. no. How is it that we have a new constitutional framework, but we are still stuck when, uh, when it comes to, for example, the issues uh, with uh, uh, the, the conduct of our security mm. apparatus? Mm. And uh, I remember, uh, I think it was uh, John Jomue, who said something mm. that I have never forgotten. You see, the, 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 we were seeking to deconstruct the state that consolidated power, and, and, and it was almost like the sovereign, the president was sovereign. So Njunjo Mwe said one thing, that the instruments that have been used to, to express that despotic power mm -hmm. have been the police, you know, through the command system. Wacha mm -hmm. uh, Maswali, uh, Wacha you know, that kind of thing. He says the last frontier of, uh, of uh, human rights, uh, we have to then reform the security apparatus. So you realize, Prof, we, we reformed parliament, we reformed the judiciary, we reformed the the, the, exactly. the, um, the executive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like moving from the uh, members of parliament who were appointed from the legislature, but you, we left certain institutions intact, among them the security uh, sector. So I think, Prof, one, one thing that I feel strongly that uh, we may we, we want to do is that the thought leadership that captured the importance for a comprehensive constitutional overhaul, um, they, they, they left the ball when we started implementing. We, we need to go back, as Jeremiah says in to chapter 7, mm -hmm. go back to the crossroads and seek and ask for the ancient parts. Uh, when we were reforming the constitution, mm -hmm. what did we require of the police? the police? When we were reforming the constitution, what did we require of public finance? Mm -hmm. What did we require of the judiciary? So that that continued um, uh, reflection, introspection, and thinking, uh, what happens? Okay. Uh, informs the implementation. Okay. Because I can tell you mm -hmm. we are fallen people, mm -hmm. and the natural thing is to always easily tend to go to what has worked in the past, mm -hmm. including the wrong things that have not worked okay. in the past. Okay. Prof, just this week we've seen uh, the judiciary, uh, of course the Supreme Court celebrating ju jurisprudential conference, mm. uh, 12th year anniversary. Yeah. Uh, if you look at that celebration uh, as an arm of government and you look at legislature and uh, the executive, would you say in the cogwheel of the constitutional implementation is failing or lagging behind? Mm. Uh, that's a very important question. Actually, when we did the constitution as a country, we introduced a fourth arm of government. Mm -hmm. That is the constitutional commissions uh, and the independent yeah. officers. officers. Because mm -hmm. we were wary of uh, the, the, the imperial presidency yes. and you know the legislature, which was a yes legislature. Mm -hmm. You know, even the judiciary itself had been uh, very compromised yes. uh, so that uh, they would just uh, hand over decisions mm. or more or less as told by the executive. Mm. First of all, the executive mm. continues to want to dominate the other arms of government mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, increasingly the legislature itself and that's why the agencies seem to target the parliament, uh, parliament mm. because they are saying that you are supposed to hold government accountable, mm. uh, hold, you know, the executive accountable. You are not doing that mm. and, you know, you seem to just vote as you are told, mm. you know, you use CDF mm. uh, to, 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 to the way you want. Mm. It doesn't really benefit people and mm. it's not even constitutional. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I think in that area of the legislature, as people go to elections next time, mm. I think we need to devise even a criteria 
for who, you know what do you look for a leader mm. whether it's parliament whether it is uh, mca whether it is president it's whoever mm. you know because otherwise we seem to bring people who are very easily to compromise mm. and to control mm. so parliament is not doing well mm. the the, the executive, in terms of its style mm. currently, it is a style which leaves a lot to be desired, in my estimation. Uh, the judiciary also has been accused of uh, sometimes they seem to go to bed with the executive and so on and so forth. But I would say myself, uh, when I was a governor, the judiciary helped us tremendously to secure devolution. Many cases that uh, uh, were brought to court to, arbit to, to arbitrate between the, 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 the national government and the county, county government. government. Courtesy of the devolution, it was easy uh, to, 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 to at least help uh, devolution to continue to uh, flourish. But I think also for the judiciary, when citizens signal to you and tell you that we are not happy with this. Mm -hmm. The judiciary should, should self-reflect precisely and say that this public sentiment, I mean, they may not know the laws as we know them and whatever, mm -hmm. but this is the public sentiment. Uh, and ultimately, the judiciary, like all the other branches, they, they exercise delegated authority mm -hmm. from the people, mm -hmm. and therefore they must listen to the people. Of course, uh, with that change um, and the Gen Zs and what we've been discussing, yeah. uh, Mr. Kimoso, yes, um, the, the government or the nation mm -hmm. as a new deputy president, mm -hmm. Professor Kindiki, yes. is it now the right time for the president to breathe in and breathe out and take stock or now we are going to move forward from this point. If, all, you're, if you're a leader... All that thought. We we'll take a short break. When we come back, we we'll start with that. Okay. We are on Crosstalk uh, tonight, uh, joined by uh, Vincent Kimosop and Professor Kibwana. If you have any views or comments that you need to share with us, you can do that on 20316, which is our SMS line. WhatsApp line is 0786-316-316. We'll be right back after this short break. Living in a lost and broken world, constantly bombarded by messages of hate and atrocities. But with God, we can overcome. Find hope and restoration on the go through life-changing shows on the Family Media app. And then you will lose yourself and gain the world. And Jesus said, what good is it? Get to stream Family TV and Family Radio 316 straight from your phone. Catch up on a show you missed or create video streaming playlists by saving and watching videos from our huge variety of shows at your own convenience. Download the Family Media app, available for all Android and iOS users on the Google Play Store and Apple Store, respectively. Family Media, keeping Jesus on the airwaves. Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm still with Professor Kibwana and uh, Mr. Vincent Kimosop discussing the role of faith in governance. And we are coming back to you on the second part of this discussion that will focus mostly on what Christian institutions like Kenya Christian Professional Forum is doing uh, to strengthen governance in this country. Uh, Mr. Kimosop, before we went for the break, uh, just to close on the first part of this discussion. Yes. Uh, we now have a new occupant mm. in the office of the presidency, mm. uh, that's a deputy president. Mm -hmm. Is it now the highest time for the president to take stock? My answer is, uh, is, is a straight yes. And uh, th this is the premise. One is that when you have the opportunity, Paul, even for you as uh, the currently um, uh, the, the person who is moderating this show, uh, reflection and reflect and reflection uh, for a leader is something that is very critical. So I would want to say that uh, the, 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 it is not just that we have a new deputy president, it is, it is part of the responsibility for everybody who, who sits and serves in leadership. And for me, I would want to not only ask the president to take stock, but also to be coming and telling Kenyans that I appointed so and so, this is what they have done from point A to point B, but this is what I want done. If you have any additional feedback just the way I think I had you telling uh, Kenyans to participate in this program if they have views they can send them because it is that is how we improve okay. and I want to tell you um, it is uh, foolish of anyone to wish actually your president's failure because uh, when the president also fails what happens the country uh, all of us fail so I would want to say that we are rooting for the success of uh, President uh, Ruto because he succeeds Kenya
Kenya succeeds. Of course, Prof, it's easier said than that done because sometimes politics makes our country look complicated. <laughs> You've been part of the yeah, county, the, uh, <laughs> the national politics and the county level politics. And at some point, you almost chased the entire county government back to the uh, ballot. Uh, was it out of servant leadership or you got to a point where your threshold for pain <laughs> in terms of leadership was reached um, a, red, a red tape? Well, let me again, <laughs> as I answer that uh, question or attempt to answer that question, um, uh, introduce a footnote mm. to what Vincent has said mm. in terms of the question that you asked him. Mm. Uh, some of the time I thought I did some little work for my country was when I was advisor uh, mm. to President Kebaki. Mm. And, uh, you know, you are asked many things, and you're asked to do many things. And uh, you do them, but you're mum about what you have done. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't, you know, share that much. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is what, if I had opportunity to advise uh, the new uh, deputy president, I would tell him that he might be well served by you know, maybe uh, talking uh, to the president uh, more in the private uh, realm rather than uh, in the public uh, realm and uh, uh, knowing uh, who the president is as, as, as a Kenyan, uh, because we do know uh, that might help him and might help, uh, uh, might help us. Mm -hmm. uh, what you said about Makwene, uh, actually, it was not me who asked uh, the, 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 the county government to be dissolved. It, there was such an impasse because when the MCS want uh, a third, 100 people want about a third of the budget, and we have a million people mm. to have two thirds. And then I said, this is not tenable, mm. this can't work. And uh, as a result, you know, they said, we'll impeach you. They said, you know, in Nairobi people are eating, even in the counties we are supposed to eat, why don't you want us to eat? Uh, so the people decided that both of us couldn't work together. And, and therefore they, they collected signatures and they brought them to Arambi House so that the county, could, the county government could be uh, dissolved. Mm -hmm. But even after a commission, the Nyaga Commission came around, uh, and returned a verdict of yes, these people can't work. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a marriage that has mm -hmm. irretrievably yeah. broken down. Yes. Uh, the president said, if I uh, allow this at, the, uh, at this early hour in devolution, mm -hmm. then it might have you know negative effects. Mm -hmm. And since the question allowed him to do that, we we accepted uh, that uh, verdict. Mm -hmm. So I, I think. It is always a question of, and, and even when I talk to you know my young friends who want to get into uh, county leadership, national leadership, I always ask them, you must clarify why you want to get into leadership, mm -hmm. because if it is to uh, take advantage, you know, of the people. Uh, then you're not really going to, it's not a good idea, mm -hmm. it's better you didn't even get into that leadership. Mm -hmm. And also this leadership starts, uh, you know, when you're a monitor in primary school, mm -hmm. when you're a prefect in secondary school, you know, what are you doing in the, in the church, in the youth group, uh, uh, in the CBO, in the youth-based organization and so on. So uh, you don't just become a leader out of the blues, it's a journey. And uh, you know, for us who are Christians, and I, I also think about other faiths, uh, if you, you, you want to really follow what, you know, for example, the Bible says about leadership, like in, you know, Matthew, when the mother of Zebedee comes to, uh, to Jesus wanting privilege for her two sons. Mm -hmm. and, and when the other disciples learn about this, they are also quarreling and asking them, why did you want to be advantaged? Mm -hmm. Until Jesus tells them, leadership, is being a servant, mm -hmm. actually being a slave mm -hmm. to those that you lead. Mm -hmm. Because even me, Jesus, as a, 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 a son of God, mm -hmm. you know, man God, mm -hmm. I came to serve. So I think for me, uh, I thought uh, since I have deliberately decided that I don't want mm -hmm. to go into law mm -hmm. and maybe courts and make a lot of money, mm -hmm. if I take this path of being in the classroom, if I take this path mm -hmm. of being 
uh, a servant, you know, a public uh, a leader, mm. then I have I have to know that I can't be there for my advantage, mm. and and I think that is the message that we should take abroad to our young people. Mm. Uh, whom we really are expecting they are going to lead in a different way, mm -hmm. in an inclusive way, in, in, in a transformative way. Uh, that, that is the message because if they don't do that, then they shouldn't even criticize us who, whom they think have been doing wrong things. Yeah, because right now people are moving from the classroom to politics because it seems like politics is very lucrative and the element of servant leadership then is lost. The, um, we lost no. two things. Uh, in, we've lost two things. I think this has been more almost like a reflective conversation on the Katiba. There, there are two things we've lost in this uh, journey. One is the implementation of Chapter 6. And uh, chapter six, if, if you read just, I think from 72 uh, on principles of integrity, mm -hmm. like, like leadership based on, uh, like if it is an, an election, it has to be free and fair. If it is appointed, it is on merit. Mm -hmm. uh, the principles of leadership, the values of leadership, I think that is a, a silent chapter mm -hmm. that we haven't, uh, we haven't really uh, begun to implement. So I, I wish we could do more on chapter six of our constitution and then bodies like uh, Kenya Christian Professional Forum uh, and the platforms that you've organized like uh, church and politics ah, yes, the conferences yes. that you've done yes has tried also to push uh, the thinking of Kenyans and Around, those in leadership yeah, to mm. think through that chapter of the constitution uh, prof um, like uh, Vincent has mentioned in terms of servant leadership and you're a recipient of that award uh, it said that politics is very dirty that the only people can survive in there yeah, are believers and it seems like you've survived in mm. politics uh, mm -hmm. because of your faith is there an element that your faith played critically in your leadership journey that will say, if it was not for my faith, mm -hmm. I would have been grouped with these others. For me, I don't think politics is dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, dirty people make politics dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, say that so, again, I think that is a, a good uh, sound bite eh, for uh, uh, yeah, so, so, please. So yeah. I, really, I really think that, you know, dirty people make politics appear to be dirty, but politics is not dirty. We know leadership like what Joseph did for Egypt. Mm. We know what Daniel, you know, mm. did. We know what David did. So uh, it is not like, and, and that, that, that was politics because of Nehemiah, mm. you know, and many uh, people in the Bible. So um, for me, uh, being a governor was ministry. Mm. So I said to myself, I'm going to Makweni, uh, as a governor, and this is ministry, and, 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 and I think the way in which, you know, with others we did the work was, you know, always to honor God, to respect other faiths, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, these values, you know, accompanied uh, what, uh, what, uh, what we did, and I think that is the only option you have as a believer. Even before I went to become governor, I told President Kebaki, because I was advisor then, I told him I want to go and study theology. He said, Professor, mm. you see, you have mm -hmm. studied too much. Mm. Why do you want to do this? Mm. And because actually it was part of my preparation, mm. you know, for that for new ministry. role. Mm. At that time, uh, I had reached the point where I knew that it would serve me well. Uh, there are quite a lot that we've not discussed. Mm. We have issues of our slavery, we have Shah and Shif and mm. all this taxation and you are an economist. Is this the government just collecting money to have money to pay debts or to serve the common person? These are discussions that we'll have next time. <laughs> uh, God giving us uh, another opportunity to, mm. to meet with you. But one thing that you've mentioned that is very critical is mm. getting back to servant leadership. Mm. I think that's what we are lacking as a nation. Mm. Uh, and uh, I think Kimosop is profound of saying, Atutaki tu, uh, bora utumishi. 
Yeah. Tunaitaji um, utumishi bora. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. <laughs> I needed yeah. that to be our yeah. end. Uh, as, we, as we come to the end of this discussion, I want to thank you, uh, Prof, for creating time for us. Uh, Kimosop as well, thank you, and all the best in your 10th anniversary yeah. end of this month. And looking forward to still engaging with you in Kimosopo. that as well. Um, that's where we end the discussion. Of course, it still continues on our YouTube channel. You can still put your comments, uh, views on what has been discussed. Uh, but ask yourself a critical question as a citizen of this nation. Apart from voting and paying taxes, what else would you need uh, the government to do from where you sit that would help us build uh, the nation moving forward, not just complaining all the time? Um, have a great evening and a good night. Bye-bye for now.